in my unhappiness to, to realize, yeah, I, I kind of took a wrong turn. And I reached for security, right? I reached for security and I reached for affirmation and it worked for a while. And then I woke up one day and realized I don't like this story. I don't like my story. I am love in a rainbow. You're going to feel like, hmm, wow, this doesn't seem right. And you're either pleading with your condition or you're pleading with God going, you know, and I'm losing heart during this time. What do you say to that? Like, what would you say to someone who wakes up unhappy? First of all, I would say congratulations that you've woken up. There's an awakening because otherwise you'll continue in that slumber. And most people do for, I mean, sometimes for decades. It's a really disruptive but beautiful moment because that is God coming in for heart surgery. Even if we don't initiate the change, as a loving father, God will come in <laughs> and he'll say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disrupt the story now for your sake. Even through your unhappiness is what we're saying, gang. It's not that God always works by bringing joy. Sometimes God works through what Chesterton called divine discontent. He's in the disruption. He's in the stall. He's in the unhappiness. He's in the boredom. And he's in the fact that you don't like it. God was in that because you didn't have 10 seconds to think about that stuff in your busy world, right? Everybody's first impulse is fix this, fix it, get me out of this. I need change, I need something, you know? Like we start grasping for that something that's gonna get us out of the funk, right? And I, I just wanna say, hang on, hang on. God may be in the stall installing of the story. How many times in the scriptures does this happen, right? You look at all these famous characters like Moses, right? Prince of Egypt, and he's like, I'm gonna intervene for my people. And he ends up killing the Egyptian guard and, and then he flees the country. I don't know how long it is, it's decades, but he's out in the desert tending sheep, right? Down in Midian, right? And he had to have been thinking, I was the third most powerful person in Egypt, right? Like I was the dude and I had everything and now I'm what? I'm looking after these livestock out in this backwater village somewhere? I mean, these stories, David, right, before he actually becomes king is constantly, you know, he's, where's David? He's, he's down in the desert somewhere hiding in some caves. You read some of the Psalms and he sounds pretty stuck and pretty discouraged by it, right? Like, where'd you go, guy? He used to go out with our armies. He used to lead us in victory. And he didn't even seem to be around anymore. And I think that we have the advantage of reading the scriptures. So we're seeing the end of the story. And we're like, oh yeah, but well, Moses, he gets that sorted out. Come on, he leads the Exodus. Think about Indiana Jones, okay? And when he's on that rickety bridge and there's guys with swords, coming at him from both sides, and he's over a ravine that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of feet, can't jump off, rickety bridge swaying back and forth, about to break, he's in the middle, these guys are coming on either end. As the viewer, we lean in. We know intuitively this is where it really gets good. This is awesome. When you're Indiana Jones, it feels anything but awesome. What I want to invite people into is, in your own story, when it feels like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, I'm numb, my heart's numb, I feel stuck, that's the good part, because now change is about to happen. 